When he opened it, the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign and Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? And each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, so you've been planning a party, the invitations have gone out, the RSVPs have come back in, and you got the food out, it's the day of, the time has come, all right, there's people there, people have arrived early, but what do you do? Do you start right on time, or do you wait a few more minutes for the other people to make it to the party? And if you're going to wait, how long are you going to wait? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Thirty minutes? I did that once. A wedding I officiated. Thirty minutes, more than thirty minutes from the start of when we said we would do it because the sister of the bride had gotten pulled over about a mile away from church. <laughs> she wasn't going to start without her. But if you do something like that, if you wait, if you delay, guess what's going to happen? The people there who are already there who came on time are going to start to get a little agitated, going to start to get a little upset because you said, we were starting at this time, we're here. Why are we not starting? Why are we delaying? Really, I think that's a, probably a good question to be asking as we are celebrating the season of end times as we've been in the last couple of weeks here at church. You know, Jesus told us to the signs of the end, he said that there would be false Christs, there would be people claiming to be the I Am, and there would be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines, and there would be persecution of Christians all over the world, but also that the gospel will be preached to the ends of the earth, and then the end would come. Well, there are wars and rumors of wars, there are false Christs, there are famines, and there are earthquakes, and there's persecution, and the gospel is being preached all over. This is happening every single day, so when are we getting started, Lord? How much longer do we have to wait? And if you are asking that question, if you're at least thinking that, how much longer, you're not alone. It was the saints in heaven who were asking that here in Revelation chapter 6. Now to give you kind of what's happening, Revelation has like four different pictures of the end times, but they all say basically the same thing. In this particular vision, you have seven seals that the Lamb, Jesus, is opening up. And he's opened up four already. And with the four that he's opened up, from that has come conquest, killing, plague, famine, Pestilence, death. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, as you might know them by. And then it says this happens. When the lamb, lamb opened the fifth seal, I, John, who's writing this, saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, how long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? You know, the signs at the end, they've been happening since the first century A.D., and they've continued on 2,000 years. If you think about John, John is in a unique position. He has heard about all the other 11 apostles being martyred already at this point in his life. And of course, those aren't the only people who have died because they held to the word of God and the testimony of what God had done for them. That these are people who trusted that Jesus was in fact the Messiah, that he had come to fulfill the law of God, and that he had died on the cross to take away their sins, and he rose from the dead so that death would be conquered forever. And they wanted to make sure that other people would hear this. And what did they get in return? Floggings, imprisonment, death. They were killed for it. And not just in the first century, it's happened every century since. And we don't actually know the total number of those who have died because they maintain this testimony to God, but that 
number can be estimated anywhere from 70 million to 200 million Christians have died because they confess this truth about Christ. And that number is increasing. It's not going down. It's about 13 every day. 5,000 roughly every year. That's just recently. You go back 10 years, and then you're getting up to like 100,000 in a year. Dying because they hold to the testimony of God. For these people to die for that reason, it's not right. People should not be getting killed because they are telling others this is the one way to eternal life, that this is the only way you can be saved from your sins, but that's exactly why they're dying. This is unjust. So, so much more, we want to ask that question, how long, Lord? How long until you are going to actually bring justice on this earth? Because guess what? This is not right. And it shouldn't be happening. And you are a God of justice, so when are you going to avenge their blood? When are you going to make this right? When are the wicked going to reap what they have sown? Maybe it's a question you are asking. And not just these saints triumphant, these saints who are already in heaven, who have already died for their faith, and they too are asking God, how long? How long till you come and judge the earth? What's the answer? Well, the answer is, first, just very simply, he doesn't actually speak something. In answer to the question, it says, then each of them was given a white robe. So to those who have already died for holding and maintaining their testimony about God, that he is the one, the way, the truth, and the life, that he died to take away our sins, and because of that, they are actually given this white robe. It's symbolic of what God has actually done for them. That as they think about the injustice in the world, there is that part that says, from the Lamb, his blood was shed for this very reason. He died, paying for the injustices of this world. That everything wrong that has ever been done to you, that every act of inhumanity, Every terrible thing, it was Jesus, as he was nailed to the cross, that he was taking that payment on himself. That the justice of the world, the injustices, were all piled on his shoulders. He was paying the price so that justice would be met before God and for the whole world, for every single one of us. And because the Lamb was slain for injustice, God's justice now declares that you too have a white robe. That you too are forgiven of all your sins. That you too are covered with the perfection of God himself. That you are in fact a saint. So when God answers that question, how long, the first thing he says, here's a new set of clothes. Here's what you are right now. Washed clean made perfect, made whole, that you are perfect, you are a saint. Great, I got a new set of clothes. Okay, cool. How long? How long, Lord? Because still, this just can't keep going on forever. And maybe you are thinking of the people that you held in such high regard. Maybe you are thinking of the people who were your spiritual mentors, the people who brought you to faith, the people that in spite of adversity, that the people who professed that Christian faith and were slain for it. Maybe you're thinking of pastors or missionaries. Maybe you're thinking of a parent, a grandparent, a friend. And you know that this is still happening. So God, how long? And after giving that white robe, he simply says this. We're just told the statement that to these people in heaven, they were to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. Wait. We ask how long, and God answers, here's a white robe, wait. Wait. Hold on. Keep going. 
One, because you know that you're already a saint, that you know you're already forgiven, you know you're already robed in Christ's righteousness, and wait, because there's a whole lot more people that are going to know this. There's a whole lot more people that are going to know what you know, a whole lot more people who are going to maintain that testimony to God, to know that he has come to this world, that he has died for our sins and rose from the dead and has robed us with his righteousness. Wait. Because this party is going to be so fantastic. I have so many people RSVP'd. It's, it's kind of incalculable. And I want you to wait for them. I want you to wait to start until they're all here. Because I know that they're coming. They're going to be here. I know exactly where they are right now. So wait. Wait because justice has already been served in the land. Wait, because I want you to enjoy this with so many more people that are already there. Because that's going to make it so much sweeter and so much better. So wait, saints. Wait and know that more people will be brought to faith. In fact, that while we're here, we actually get to participate in that. That God lets us share him with others. We get to share the very word of God that brings people to faith. And we get to maintain that testimony. But it is going to be hard. It's going to be hard because we are waiting. And we are wondering how long. And we want to be ready for whenever that judgment day comes. Whether it comes today or whether it comes 2,000 years from now. Who knows? We don't. But it is coming. And so we are called to wait. Wait, because so many more will be added. And what we do while we wait, the very things that renew us in that white robe of righteousness that we have from God. That as we wait for him, we continue to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That we encourage each other. That when it gets hard and when we are persecuted for what we believe, that when we are maybe on that other side of it, that we pray for each other that we take care of each other, that we gather in here and remember our baptisms, that we remember I have that white robe from God. He washed me clean of all my sins. He put his name on me, adopted me into his family, and robed me with the righteousness of Christ and said, I am an heir of eternal life with him. That when we hear the deeds of Christ over and over again, that we remember the lamb who was slain to pay for that injustice so we know justice is met in him. There's nothing more I need to do. That as I come and I eat and drink his body and blood, I know that this is given and poured out for me for the forgiveness of my sins. That by doing so, not only am I forgiven and I am joined together with this body of Christ, that I see a whole bunch of saints right here with me. It helps me think of that great company and the heavenly host who are also just waiting for us, who look so forward to having us join them, and then we in turn think of that next generation and the one after that, and so many more that will come to faith through the word of God. And we want them to be there. And so we hold, we wait, we hold to the testimony that God has given us of what he has done, how he has robed us in perfection, and now we wait. Because it's going to make for even a better reunion of heaven. Of all those people you can think of, of all those saints triumphant who have already gone into heaven, yep, you'll get to see them. You'll get to see the heroes of old, all the apostles who have died, and you'll get to see so many more people you haven't even met yet. We know that God has RSVP'd them. They are going to be brought to faith. They are going to become saints just as we are. So until then, while we wonder how long, we have God's answer. Wait. Here's your white robe. You are forgiven. You are perfect. You are whole. Wait. Because so many more are coming to join us in that blessed reunion of heaven where we will join the saints triumphant. Amen. Amen.